Welcome back everybody to another Raid Shadow Legends video. Thank you so much in advance for tuning in. Today I have a really awesome episode to go over with you. Today I want to discuss going over these high resistance teams that we see everywhere in arena on reset day during the midweek. They have 400k team power, 350, 500k depending on where you are. They run resistance aura so their resistance is crazy high. Uh, most times Madame can't even strip them and they take minutes upon minutes to get rid of uh, to, to finish the fight and I kind of want to showcase an easy way uh, to get through these kind of teams what team I just built to uh, basically get through it it does even work against hedges with using the proper champions and I just kind of want to show you an overall synergistic team that synergizes really well together and showcasing a very special champion, a champion that most people sleep on, that has one of the best multipliers in the game uh, for a single. Let's begin this episode by showcasing the team that I wanna highlight today. First off, this is the premium version. Let me make that clear, what I'm about to show you, but we do have a budget version that I will show you later in the video, just in case you don't have these champions readily available to you. So I will be using Arbiter in this video today, and she has a 336 speed, so not crazy fast or anything like that. This strategy, what's awesome about it is that you're going against high resist teams, so you don't really have to worry about speed. A lot. Uh, the One of the reasons I also wanted to make this video is because a lot of people are having issues with speed. They have to attack tanky teams, and when they attack tanky teams, normally it takes them a very long time to get through them. So. I, I had all that in mind prior to making this video and I wanted to make a video that's really awesome for all of you to enjoy. We will be using one of my favorite champions in the game, Battle Sage, because sometimes we need that attack up, sometimes we're going to be going against the Hegemon team, so she's always amazing and I always run her with um, the immunity gear, we'll go over that at a separate point of the video. But the two big stars that I want to highlight today, actually let's call them three. First off, we're going to talk about our boy Kaimar. He is amazing. I'm so happy and fortunate to have two of them. One I run for dungeons, one I primarily use for arena. I elected to build him this way and we'll talk about gear and all of that uh, a little bit later on. The star of the show, your boy right here, Royal Huntsman. If one wasn't good enough, how about two? That's right. I went ahead and fully booked and built two of them so I can make this awesome content for you guys today. And let's go over and talk about all the good, good details right away. All right, so when it comes to skills, I will be going over the, th the two main champions that we will be highlighting today, Kaimar to be the first. So what we're looking at for his skill is his Seal of Magic arguably one of the best and most overpowered abilities in the game not only does it reset all the cooldowns for all ally skills but it also fills uh, all ally turn meter by 20 percent so this is incredible we don't have to worry about the long cooldown because we're only planning on using it once hence we want fast ones in arena this ability here as well Ab abyssal gaze is actually really amazing for removing buffs but we don't really need to rely on it too much and obviously kaimar's aura is just as good as arbiter's aura we love this aura and now let's talk about royal huntsman so what makes royal huntsman so amazing a few things okay number one is it doesn't matter if I'm going against a team that has eight buffs, six buffs with a huge shield. Nothing matters when it comes to Royal Huntsman. All I really want from Royal Huntsman is to have attack up. I don't care about defense down. I don't care about removing buffs. None of that really matters to me. So when it comes to Royal Huntsman, what I'm looking for, the only ability that really concerns me, that I care a lot about, is Dead Aim. That's right. His A3 hits like a freight train. It pretty much one shots anything and anybody. And you don't need, you know, to debuff the, the enemy, which is amazing. And the whole purpose of this strategy is to not need to uh, have a Madame strip and does not need to put her in the team at all. He also has an AOE, doesn't do that well. Uh, it 
The multipliers are decent on it. If you have defense down, it does hit quite a lot harder, just like any ability. But the defense down portion of it is really nice. So if you do add a little accuracy to him, it's actually really nice to have that AoE. And then his A1 gives himself increased attack, which is pretty cool. Now, I built the second one pretty much the same exact way. So the reason why I like to use Arbiter in this comp is because um, she gives us attack up, which is really, really nice in her A3. But uh, just in case, if we're going to go against Hegemon teams, we have Battle Sage, who will give us her Nurture's Touch, remove all the debuffs off of us, and go ahead and give us attack up. So now that we went over the skills, let's go ahead and go over the masteries next. When it comes to masteries, it's very subjective based on your opinion, how you like to run your champions. So I always say that this is one of those areas that you kind of have to build your masteries the way that you feel it's going to best suit you and your champions. But I will show you how I have my masteries done. For Arbiter, I do like to go with Timely Intervention. Uh, increase this champion's turn meter by 20% whenever an ally drops below 25%. That seems to be the go-getter for me. She's very versatile. You can put even Eagle Eye on her. You can put Resistance on her. You can put, if you build her tanky, you can build her with Bulwark. There's a lot of different options for her. But my number one pick would definitely be Timely Intervention. And I do love Cycle of Revenge on her. So those two, I would say, are probably the best go-tos for her. When it comes to Kaimar, he's also very versatile. I built him to kind of hold, help me withstand uh, damage against Hegemon teams. So I did go ahead and go with Bulwark and I did go ahead and go with Selfless Defender. So that way it does help me out um, in him taking extra damage so my Royal Huntsman don't take as much damage. Otherwise, you can definitely go with Eagle Eye. Ha him having uh, uh, accuracy is actually a very, very, very good thing. Timely Intervention. I wouldn't say it's too it's, it's that good so i would say it's very flexible again you can even go in the offense tree if you wanted to this is just the way that i wanted to build him now the main stars of the show royal huntsman important note that if you're going to use these champions the way that i'm using them to try to one shot anything and anyone hump smasher for once that you're ever going to hear manny saying arena is not the go-to it would definitely be a flawless execution because if he's already ignoring 100% defense on his A3, there's no point in putting on Helm Smasher unless you want to take advantage of his A1 and A2, ignoring 50% chance of ignoring the defense. So I would say for this, mm, not really necessary. Same thing, I elected to go with the second champion, the second Royal Huntsman, and then Battle Sage. Again, I want her to take damage, so my Royal Huntsman live as long as possible. She's also super ver uh, versatile to build. So this is how I have her built as well. Coming up next, we're going to the gear. All right, so when it comes to the gear and gearing these champions out, there's sometimes it's a no-brainer. For instance, Arbiter, what do you want from her? You want her to go as fast as possible. So you will be building her with uh, six pieces of speed. As you can see, mine's my speed rolls and everything all my good speed gear is on cp yeah not much not much here uh not much here to showcase as far as anything impressive but that's arbiter's gear kaimar i wanted to put him in a shield set because i wanted extra protection just in case i needed and when i go against hegemon teams that i would be able to withstand as much damage as possible to make sure that my royal guards um <laughs> my royal huntsman stay alive so with him i decided to go with a shield set but i did still want him to be fast and want him to be over 200 speed because we we don't want to sit there and make this battle go too long so we want him to go last that is the primary objective of kaimar after everybody else goes he's the last one to go and the reason why we want that is because we want seal of magic to go ahead and reset everybody's abilities so that way um, we can go ahead and nuke right again right away so shield set standard nothing special uh try to look for as much hp as possible uh added some immortal gear in there went with speed boots this way he's not you know too slow and it didn't matter too much to me as far as uh getting over a hundred thousand health what was more important to me was having him to be fast enough his accuracy is decent not really anything that good with masteries he is about at 
200, so not too shabby for Kaimar. Now, when it comes to the two stars of the show, we'll start with him. I don't like RNG, and just in case bad RNG happens, I prefer every way possible to try to avoid it, right? So I wanted to go ahead and go with Swift Perry with both Royal Huntsmen because I don't need Savage. Savage doesn't mean anything for me for this kind of build. I don't need that extra 25% ignore damage because all I'm looking for out of Royal Huntsman is for his A3 ability, which already ignores 100% defense. We have some Swift Parry gear. This is a pretty, gear, uh, a, a pretty geared uh, Royal Huntsman. So again, I'm competing for top 10 in the world. You don't have to have this kind of crazy gear on him. This is just the kind of gear that I need to withstand those crazy big shields and to be able to pretty much nuke anybody. So pretty good Swift Parry uh, sets. Again, I have yet to craft any Swift Parry sets. I'm saving all my crafting for a little bit later. So this is um, his gear here. And I will showcase his stats in a second right here. So we are looking at a little bit. He's not the HP where I want him to be. I would kind of rather him be over 40,000, but we're okay where we're at. We're just barely hitting 5,000 attack, 2,200, almost 2,300 defense, which is decent. 255 speed, which is really awesome. I love my guys to go fast because I don't want to sit there and have the opponent lap me. And 103 crit rate, almost 300% crit damage. So I really like the build that I went with my first Royal Huntsman, my second Royal Huntsman, 25 speed or 30 speed less than my first one. Again, Swift Parry set. I want that 50% extra chance if I can get it for him to stay alive. So we have here um, all his gear that, I'm, that I will be using, which pretty bad set of boots, to be honest with you. Um, Decent, nothing got out of the out of this world, but definitely really high-end gear. So for this Royal Huntsman, very low HP to where I want him to be. I actually do need to get him above 40,000. From doing a little bit of testing, it seems like he is dying quite frequently to nuke Hedgie, so I definitely have to work on that. His attack is much higher than the first one. 225 speed, so we are losing quite a lot of speed on this one. 102, I love my 100% crit rate, as you all know and we broke 300% crit damage. So that's my build for Royal Huntsman. And then the last star of the show that we will be showcasing today is my Battle Sage. So with Battle Sage, I like and must and have to have her in immunity set. The reason why I use Battle Sage is to go against Hedgy teams. So, and I want her to be the fastest. So those are her two goals. I'm even running a flat stat, that's right. Flat stats in the bin, boys and girls. Yes, flat stat chest on her, totally fine. Um, I'm okay with using flat, flat stats. Speed and other stats are more important. She is tanky, she's not gonna die from a new Keji. She almost has 4K defense, 50,000 HP. So she is in a very, very good uh, gear set. 265 speed, not too shabby. So that pretty much covers all the gear. Now, for the moment that we've all been waiting for, the battle scenes and right after we go th through the battle scenes we will show you the budget version of this build so fear not if you don't have Kaimar if you don't have Royal Huntsman I got your back all right so battle scene time it is so now when it comes to battles I want you guys to keep in mind that for this specific strategy obviously it's not designed to go against speed teams uh, for speed teams we have other options this video and all these battle scenes are designed to go after those very high resistant teams. So those are the ones that we're going to be looking for and I'll be showcasing exactly how it works. Let's go ahead and take a look at um, some high resist teams that we can go ahead and attack. Teams specifically kind of like this, like uh, Ms. Zack, are really good teams because they look really scary. You know they have big shields and you know that they're probably going to take forever. So let's go ahead and show you a really good way of how to handle teams like this, okay? So this will be the go-to strat for something like this. So what we're doing is we're running Kaimar lead. Doesn't really matter. We can even switch them together. Doesn't make too much of a difference uh, for this particular scenario. But in other scenarios, it does matter who you put lead besides the speed aura. 
So we're gonna run this just like this, and here's what we're gonna do. Unfortunately, this does not work on auto, so you do have to go ahead and manual everything. So, A3, we're gonna go ahead and kill the Duchess that's the highest turn meter, so which is gonna be this one, 131,000. Then we're gonna hit this one, 183,000. Now we're gonna reset abilities. Now we're gonna boost again. Now we're gonna kill the Mountain King, 136,000. Now we're gonna kill the Valkyrie, 200,000. Tell me how amazing that is. Tell me how amazing that is. And now if they had red tanks, guess what? Spirit is strong against force and all you really see is force tanks all the time. So this is another reason why this strat is so good. Uh, Mr. Squidface, this is a hard counter for him. And guess what? If he does decide to go and attack us, he has a 35% chance of weak hitting us. And we also have a 50% chance on top of that for us to actually stay alive. And we have Kaimar shield to protect us in addition to that. So there are there is quite a bit of protection for this actual strategy. So let's go ahead and see if we can find someone else here. For a situation like this, for a team like uh, Paina, I'm sorry, P Piana, P Pianda, Pianda. <laughs> the no one can butcher names more than me. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and attack Pianda. Pianda, because he has a torment inside his team, what we wanna go ahead and do, add Kaimar as lead, and now we're gonna either need a Duchess, um, anybody that's gonna be able to put block debuffs up so that way we don't go ahead and get frozen. So we're gonna use Sifi in this scenario. Bad part about this right now is that we don't have attack up and this strategy really needs attack up. So now you're about to see how it works without attack up. So A3, Duchess, 84,000, so still worked. Mountain King, see, it didn't kill Mountain King. So that's the only downside I would say to this strat is that um, you need attack up. And as you can see, his Kang Defone didn't do nothing to us. One shot, 114,000. Let's go ahead and hit Torment. Torment is on the Swift Parry set. We'll go ahead and finish that off. Let's go ahead and take that off of him. And now this is when it takes a little while, which is not a big deal, but we're gonna finish it off. So now the rest of this is gonna be on auto. One main thing to also note I that I didn't mention before, for some reason or another, Royal Huntsman does not like to use his A3 in dungeons, or I think even in arena. For some reason, he just doesn't like to use that ability. I don't know what is up with his UI exactly, but as you can see, pretty straight to the point, simple way to do it. This would have been much quicker, obviously, if uh, had it been that we had attack up, but again, it's, it's reliable. This is a good one right here. This is a lot of what we see out there. Let's give this one a go. Let's see how quick we can get rid of this one here. So we have two revivers, right? So because we have two revivers, we want to focus on them first. So we're going to boost. We're going to go see who's the fastest turn meter here. She is. Get rid of her. She is. Get rid of her. Reset. Boost again. All right. Ooh, you provoked me, huh, mister? He provoked us. All right, no problem at all. That's fine. Even with attack down, right? Even with attack down, he'll, he's nothing to us. Let's see. Goodbye. Goodbye. 140K. Pretty straight to the point. Red teams, shield teams, no problem whatsoever. Let's go ahead and finish it off with none other but an incredible, incredible player, Mr. Mac Chang. He just became a moderator in my Discord. Let's check him out. All right. So let's see how this one goes. I think he's running Nuke. I'm not sure. Hopefully he's not. If he is, hopefully he doesn't kill us. All right. I don't know. I guess it's a hybrid version of a Nuke. All right. So now Duchess with the fat shield, 138k, dead. Krisk, 153k, dead. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a top five player. Obviously, this isn't his reset, but look at this. Swift Parry procced. If Swift Parry did not proc, I mean, this is this just goes to show you um, what a great strategy this is. 
You don't have to use it against Hegemons, but it is viable versus Hegemons. I mean, Royal Huntsman is the real deal. So the next step now, I want to discuss the budget version, like I mentioned earlier to you guys. If you don't have Kaimar, if you don't have Royal Huntsman, who is the go-to team that you should go with right after that? So now, if you don't have Kaimar, another option, not too viable, but you can make it work, will be Renegade. Um, Renegade has an A3 that she can go ahead and decrease the cooldowns of all allies by two turns, which is pretty good. Like I said, budget version. But here is the man himself, Faceless. This guy is incredible. He's used in top platinum. He is an amazing champion. So if you don't have Royal Huntsman, it's all good. Faceless is really, really good. Another very, very good option. And this is a perfect time where I discuss not only his A3, which it will ignore shield set and block damage. He pretty much can one shot anyone. I do want to make it clear that his multipliers are about half as good as Royal Huntsman. Royal Huntsman's multipliers are almost twice as high, his damage capabilities on, on his A3 versus Faceless. However, the trade-off is, is that Faceless is one is an epic and he ignores shield. So just kind of show you that. So now, people always say he's a Void Champion. It's, yeah, Void Champion has no weak affinities, which is amazing. But sometimes it's good to have weak and strong affinities because right now everyone's running Squid Face. So to have a, uh, a spirit champ is actually really, really amazing because you have a 35% chance that he weak hits. If I'm playing with a void champ, I have a 100% chance that I'm not going to get weak hitted. So don't always think to yourself that, oh, void is always better than anything else. That is not the case. It depends on the team that you go against. So this is a very, again, very viable strat as well to use. Three turn cooldown, Renegade can turn it down by two turns, so it can lap itself right back again. Obviously, the stats are nowhere near as good, his defense is nowhere near as high, but you can make it work, okay? Especially depending on where you are in the game. So again, I wanted to stress that this strategy was in place specifically when you go and see those 400k, 350k team power. Don't think to yourself that you're going to be stuck forever fighting those teams. You're not, there's ways, there's weaknesses to everyone. Everyone that you face has a way to beat. This is my method, obviously. My method is not including defense down. It's not including stripping the buffs. It's actually not including having a crazy built madame. It's ways around that. So I really hope that this video, um, you know, you guys got something out of it. I don't post often because when I like to make a video, I like to make an informative video, something that you guys really enjoy. So please do let me know down below what your thoughts are on this. Thanks again. It means the world to me that you guys watch this video. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up, hit that bell notification, and subscribe to your boy. Thank you and have a wonderful day.